In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can start chatting with your favorite YouTube content creators for free. And because you're awesome, I'm gonna be giving away the source code and walking you through the three simple steps to get everything working. Let me go ahead and show you actually what we're gonna be building. So this is the website that I'm giving away all the source code on, but basically it's a chat window just like ChatGPT. But what's cool is that I've already trained it to talk to an Alex Hormozzi presentation that he did about sales. So it was about a two hour long video. But what we can now do is start asking it questions. So for this example, I'm just going to say, Hey, Alex, my name is Brandon, and I want to start a one on one software coaching business to help developers learn how to build full stack applications that use AI in new ways. How should I sell this coaching service? And then once we press send, what it's going to go do is pull in some information from the YouTube video. And then it's also going to just use some general AI conversational stuff to give us back a response. And what's super cool is if you've actually watched this video, you can see that this is exactly what Alex was talking about. He wanted us to focus on keeping the prospect as the main priority in our sailing conversation. So we can follow up with a question saying, well, how do I actually do that? By keeping the prospect as a priority. Once again, it's just going to continue the conversation and give us back another answer. And then, you know, because me and Alex are buds now, I'll just say, hey man, go hang out at our usual spot next week and catch up. And per usual in his Alex self, he hits me with the reject because he's off billion, his uh, billion dollar empire. So this is super cool. And this is what we're gonna be building in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh wait, real fast. If this is the first time you've seen my channel, I just wanna introduce myself real fast. My name is Brandon. And on this channel, I create content about how developers just like yourself can use AI in new and interesting ways. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, definitely hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other videos I have on my channel. But let's get right back to it. So to start chatting with your favorite YouTuber, all you have to do is follow these three simple steps. First, we're gonna transcribe your favorite YouTube video. Second, we're gonna set up some AI tools to make all the magic AI stuff happen in the back end. And then third, all you have to do is run the code that I provided to you. It's as simple as that. So let's go ahead and start transcribing our YouTube video. So the first thing that we need to do is transcribe our YouTube video. And this is super simple now, thanks to the help of OpenAI, who released their Whisper API a while back. This basically just helps developers like you and I go from video to text. Super amazing. But in this tutorial, we're just gonna use tools that are freely available to us, just like the Assembly AI Playground. And they make it super easy to transcribe your YouTube videos. All you have to do is find the YouTube video that you want. In my case, I'm just gonna copy the link to the YouTube video that I described in the beginning of this presentation with Alex Ramosi giving his presentation on sales. And all you have to do is come back over here, paste in your link. And once you do that, you just hit next. Then Assembly AI is gonna ask you, what do you want to do to this YouTube video? Well, we obviously wanna transcribe it. And I recommend trying out some of the other cool tools that they offer, such as detecting what topics were discussed, making some summaries, making some auto chapters, if you can, you have to go back and forth. And then other than that, I'm just gonna go ahead and say next. What you'll notice is that Assembly AI says that it'll take around 15 to 30% of the duration of the video to create this summary. So a 10 minute video takes about 90 seconds to three minutes. We're just gonna sit back, relax, and wait for it to finish doing its magic. All right, so Assembly AI just finished summarizing the video I uploaded, and it honestly did an awesome job. Like this transcript is pretty darn perfect. You'll see it kind of messes up some words. It thinks Alex Hormozzi's name is Alsha Mosey, but hey, honestly, pretty close. But the main thing you need to know is the transcript is over here on the left, and it just goes all the way down. You're gonna to wanna to keep this window open because we're gonna to need to copy and paste this over later. But what's also cool is how we clicked a few of the other features that we would like Assembly AI to run, such as the summarization. So that's what you can see over here. And we also told it that we want to do some topic detection. That's what you can see. And this is actually kind of what Alex Formosi talks about kind of throughout the video. So this is super cool that it did both of them, but we're officially done with step one. So we're gonna move over to step two where we're gonna set up all of our AI tools. All right, now that we're in step two, all we're gonna do is set up two different AI accounts. The first one's gonna be Pinecone, which is gonna be completely free. And then the second one is gonna be OpenAI, which only cost a few pennies. So we're basically doing everything for free here today. The first tool that we're gonna be using is Pinecone. Pinecone is a vector database that allows us to save stuff. And I know it's a little complicated. Basically what it allows us to do is transform a lot of strings or a lot of text into numbers. And then it allows us to store those numbers into a Pinecone database, which is gonna be super cool because when we're chatting 
with our models, what it will do is convert our questions such as, hey Alex, how do I talk to customers? It'll convert that into a, a vector or just some numbers and it compares that question to what's in the database and returns us back the most relevant information. That's actually how it works. It's super easy to get this set up. All you need to do is click sign up for free to create a free account and the setup process is super simple. So I'm not gonna walk through that. Once you have signed up, it'll bring you over here to the dashboard that should look something just like this. Mine already has my Alex Hormozzi vector database. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it and I'm going to create my own vector database with you right now. Let me delete that real fast. All right, cool. So to create your index, all you need to do first is click this create index button in the top right. And on my case, I'm just going to call mine Alex Hormozzi once again, because that was the name of the YouTube video and YouTube creator that I want to talk to. Now, when it comes to dimensions, this is super important. You need to specifically type in 1536. This directly relates over to how OpenAI and does their embeddings. It's honestly in the weeds. You don't need to worry about it. The next thing is when it comes to metrics, leave it at cosine. And then in our case, because we're not going to be storing a ton of data. We're just talking to a single YouTube video. I've had the best luck with the P1, which focuses on faster queries. Once you do that, what you need to do is hit create index, and this will take about one to two minutes to spin up our database on Google Cloud Platform. And while that's creating, I just want to mention something important about Pinecone database. If you were just creating an account, you might be waitlisted just for a few days, uh, just because they've had such a demand because this tool is so powerful. So I would definitely recommend going ahead and getting and creating an account now, just in case you want to use it down the line, you already have it set up waiting for you. And then second, on the free tier, you are only allowed to create one vector database. So that's important to know. But what is cool, you can store basically as much information in there as you want. It is an awesome free plan. I highly recommend. But once Pinecone finishes creating your new vector database, what you need to do next is click the API keys over here on the left, left tab. And what we're going to need to do is create a new private API key. In my case, I'm just going to call this Alex Hormozzi. He was giving a presentation on sales. Once you save this key, what you need to do is copy down two values. And it's important that you don't copy them to your code, then they can get published to the world and you don't want that to happen. So keep these somewhere safe right now. But the two things you need to copy down are the environment where your vector database was created and second, this value key right here. So just save that somewhere safe. And now what we need to do is because you're done with Pinecone, what we're going to do next is head over to OpenAI to where we're going to create some API keys over there as well. All right, so I just pulled up OpenAI and don't worry, I'll have links links to the assembly, the Pinecone, and OpenAI, so you can just click the links down in the description below. But what you need to do to create your OpenAI keys is hit your name in the top right, and you'll need to sign up for an account if you already don't have one, but it takes two seconds to do. And once you've done that, you need to click the View API Keys button. And what this will do is show you all your active keys. In our case, we're gonna create a new key once again, and I'm just gonna call mine Alex Hormozzi Sales, just like I did before, so I know they're together. And what you'll need to do once again is copy this secret key. You're gonna wanna put it somewhere save probably just where you saved everything else. And once you've done that, you're officially done with step two. And now we can move on to copying down the code and running it. All right, we're officially on step three, the final step. And all we have to do now is just run the code. And in order to do that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click the link down below so you can get access to this GitHub repo right here. And once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to hit the code button right here and clone down the code. So I've already done that, so I'm gonna head back over to Visual Studio Code real fast. All right, so once you've cloned down the repo from GitHub, you just need to run two simple steps. The first, once you open up your terminal, is you need to run npm i to install all the dependencies required to run this full stack application. And then after that, you need to update your environment variables. So what you'll notice is in your file, you will have a dot env example. What you'll need to do is to paste in the secret keys that we've been generating along the way and pasting in your values right here. Once you're done, it'll look something just like this, um, where you have your open AI key, your pinecone key environment, and your pinecone index. Just copy in your stuff so it looks just like this, and you'll need to rename your example file to get rid of the example so it looks just like this dot env file. The only other important thing I want to mention is this pinecone index. This is the name of your pinecone database that you generated earlier. Once you've done all that, you just need to run npm run on dev to start running this full stack application. It looks like everything's up and going. So let's go ahead and head over to localhost 3000 and make sure it's working. All right, so I just pulled up localhost 3000 and everything looks like it's working perfectly. So in order for us to start talking to our YouTube video, what we need to do next is head over to this transcript portion of our website. So just click on the link over here and you'll see a page like this where we can dump in our transcript. This is where we head back over to assembly AI. And what we're gonna wanna do is copy that super long transcript that we made earlier. So what you'll do is just come over 
here, paste it in, and then all you need to do to actually get the back end to start doing its stuff, which we're gonna dive in here, or uh, dive into in just a moment when we talk about exactly how this stuff works. All you need to do is hit process, and what it's gonna do is start chunking our stuff and then saving it off to our vector database. And cool, it looks like it did it. Everything looks like it's saved over properly to our Pinecone database. And all we need to do to verify that it's working is head back over to our uh, Pinecone dashboard. I'm gonna refresh it just to make sure that it's using the latest data. And to verify that our transcript has been parsed and saved to our vector database, all you need to do is hit this index info. And what you'll see is that we have a non-zero number. So in this case, I have 104 total vectors and that was saved from the transcript. So everything is working, which means we can now head back over to our localhost and start chatting with it. All right, cool. So I've pulled back up localhost and now all I need to do is click the chat button so we can start chatting with our vector database. In this case, I'm just gonna say once again, hey, I would like to create a one on one software coaching business. How could I sell the service? Cool. So what's happening right now is it's actually pulling down data from our vector database and how it knows which data to pull down is it actually converts our text prompt into a vector, kind of like I talked about earlier, and it looks through our vector database to see which chunk of information is most similar. So it's probably looking forward to like coaching business, selling and services, and it's looking to see which chunk of text in our transcript is most similar. And then what it does is if you're similar to how ChatGPT works is you can kind of just paste in a blob of text and then ask questions about it. That's exactly what's happening here in our case. So in our case, it's saying, hey, if you want to sell your coaching service, make sure that the person really wants the goal and believes in your product. So, you know, this could be like, hey, I teach software developers how to use AI tools and full stack technologies. And like I said, this is conversational, just like we talked about earlier. So you can say, how would you recommend I go about doing that. And what it's gonna do, send back up the conversation, add the new question, and it's just gonna keep generating new prompts and still provide a context from earlier. So we're gonna talk about this more when we dive into Langchain, but I just want you to know this is how it's all, all working. So. so this is pretty cool. Now that you know how this application works, let's actually go ahead and dive over to the two backend files that make all of this work. All right, so here's the quick code deep dive. The project that you're looking at right now was built using the T3 stack. It's basically Next.js with some Tailwind, TypeScript, and TRPC. Don't worry about that right now. The important part is, is we're using TypeScript. And what I've done is I've created two backend routes, one for Pinecone, which we've already used before, and the second one is for Langchain. And we'll dive into that tool here in a second. But what's cool about the Pinecone backend API is what I've done is I've made it to where we can actually pass in a blob of text. This was that transcript that we pasted in earlier. And then what I've done after that is say, hey, I want to create a new Pinecone client. And this is where those API secret keys came in. And then what we do is we say, hey, I want to use this specific pinecone index, which we called out. And then what we want to do is start chunking up that huge transcript that we created earlier, which was probably tens of thousands of words. And what we do is we want to break each blob of text down into 2000 tokens. And what we want to do is not only break it down into 2000 tokens, we just want to have a little overlap on the edges. It's not just chunk, chunk. There's a little bit of overlap and that might help with some of the responses that come back to us. After that, what we want to do after we split up all the text is we want to start creating documents. I don't know if you remember those vectors that we talked about earlier, but those were basically each one of these documents becomes one of those like key vectors. After that, all we're, what we're going to do is just keep saving stuff. And what we do is we return a 200 if everything works properly. So that's when that little toast icon popped up in the bottom right saying success. So that's exactly how this pine cone works. Now let's head over to the Langchain API and talk about it real fast. All right, before we dive into the Langchain code, I actually just want to show you the documentation because I thought this was super helpful and Langchain on Honestly, made everything that I showed to you today made it possible. Just as a high-level overview, Langchain, just think of it as a wrapper around the OpenAI, all the tools around it, and it just makes them 10 times better basically makes them on steroids. And it also allows us to interact with our indexes. So that's how we inter interacted with Pinecone. Langchain is the thing that made that possible. And then it honestly just has a lot of other cool tools. This was actually specifically based off the conversational retrieval Q&A tool that comes from Langchain. This entire tutorial was actually based upon this cool little snippet of code right here. I just had to plug and play with a few of the different models to get it to work for our use case. So but now that you know what Langchain is, you've seen it in the documentation. So I actually have links to it down in the description 
description of this video below, but definitely check it out. This is what made everything possible. So back to the code. The important thing that you need to know about when it comes to Langchain is, like I said, we're making another endpoint for interact with Langchain. This is strictly when we're on the front end and we're setting up our queries to the back end. But basically what I do is I have a, a question that the user prompts us with and then our chat history. That's what allowed me to uh, continue talking to it and it to have context for what was going on in the past. But all you need to know is that we pass up our question in chat history. We do some validation. Once again, we spin up our Pinecone client because we're going to need it to actually pull in information from our vector database. And then what we're going to do is open up our vector store. Once again, this is just pulling a specific Alex Hormozy index. And then now here comes the cool part where we're gonna use OpenAI. What we do is we say, hey, I wanna make a new model from OpenAI, and I want to use that conversational retrieval Q&A chain. That's super important that we use this specific chain to allow the, the conversation to happen. And then we just pass in the model, which in our case is we wanna use OpenAI, and then the vector store, which is our Alex Hormozy sales video. And then we can just pass queries to it. We just ask our question, pass along our chat history, and it's honestly as simple as that. What we'll do is we'll get back and answer which will contain the text. And that's how we simulated that chat GPT conversation that you're so used to. So those are the two super important files, but you have access to the entire code base. Feel free to dig around. I thought this was a super cool project to get used to Langchain and Pinecone. So I really hope you enjoyed it. All right, congratulations guys. You just learned how to chat with your favorite YouTube content creators. And you also learned about Pinecone and Langchain. So cheers guys. And I also wanna say if you have any questions or if you need help on your own AI projects, I actually do a lot of free one-on-one -on -one coaching. I I just want to get to know you guys and learn how I can best serve y'all. So I have a link down in the description below. Feel free to get that set up. I'm excited to get to meet y'all. But with that said, I have a ton of other tutorials just like this on the channel. So feel free to click around and see some of the other awesome tutorials I have. With that said, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.